snowballing is a pet topic of mine uh, because it's a design concept that is incredibly widespread and I think is basically just bad. <laughs> um, and it's the idea that when you do well in the game, you are given a reward that uh, improves your abilities, makes your character better or whatever, whatever the limit on your effectiveness in the game, it is upgraded in some way, or rather the limit is removed a little bit. And uh, it's a very satisfying kind of reward. It's very, those are like mechanical rewards are the ones we care about most in mechanics driven games. Um, if you can actually, you know, leveling up feels good. Um, getting a new weapon or something that uh, upgrades your, your capabilities feels good. Getting any kind of new ability that's going to be useful to you feels very good. So it's natural to use it as a reward for overcoming a challenge. Um, the problem comes when it's used as a kind of finesse reward. Like you did this, you did especially well. So we're going to give you extra experience. We're going to give you an extra weapon. I'm just going to talk about combat games because it gets way simpler if we if we. Uh, the language gets way simpler if we can limit our scope for a bit, but it does apply to non-combat games as well. Um, but yeah, if you give someone a, a better weapon or um, more XP for succeeding more than the, than the average player, um, the problem with that is that this is a player who's already finding the game a little bit easy. They're finding it easier than someone else. They're probably enjoying it like the first time. The first time you do really well and the game says, wow, you did better than usual. Here's a special reward. Feels great. But you only did that because the game's difficulty was a little bit lower than it probably should be for long-term enjoyment. And now you've just been given something that makes the game easier. And so there are ways you can kind of try and wriggle out of that. But the example I use, and I've used it before, is um, XCOM. Um, it is a classic case of snowballing. And it's also a case of a game that succeeds despite that. Well, I think it succeeds despite it. It also uh, partly, uh, some of the appeal of XCOM is a positive consequence of snowballing. It explains why designers do this in the first place, uh, because it feels really good. It feels great when your guys in XCOM level up. You have a successful mission, they made it through, uh, they all gain some levels and experience and they get better. Um, and if you have a non-successful mission, they die. <laughs> so this is, uh, I've also heard this called win more, this, this concept, uh, but I'm using snowballing uh, partly because I want to talk about it in the other direction as well. Failure can snowball, uh, and XCOM's classic example of that too. So um, if you succeed in a mission and none of your guys die, uh, if none of you guys even take a hit, that is, I think, XCOM being too easy. That's when it's got, like, it's satisfying, again, like the first time, the first few times maybe, uh, but if you're consistently getting everyone out without taking a scratch, the game's probably not pushing back at you hard enough, but when that happens, they all level up and they're ready to use right away. XCOM 2 introduces some uh, fatigue mechanic where they're, they're down for a little bit, but it's still universally true that the better you do, the sooner you can use your cool, awesome guys who are now even better and you just, the game gets easier. The game just gets easier when you do well. Uh, if you're finding the game easy, it gets easier. If you're finding the game hard, it gets harder because your guys die. Even if they're only even if they're not superstar, incredibly valuable um, troops that you've leveled up for ages, even if it's just mission two, and the guys who've got experience on level one, mission one, uh, all die, <laughs> now you're doing mission three with level one guys instead of level three guys. Um, so it's extremely costly to lose, and it's extremely beneficial to win. Um, and I generally think that's not a great pattern. <laughs> You'll see, um, I know it's, like, this is certainly how it feels to me, um, and XCOM is good, like, like I say, XCOM is still fantastic. Uh, partly because leveling up feels so good, and that's that's the the you know dark trade off <laughs> where this this thing that's I think pretty bad for balance is uh, good for the moment to moment experience in certain cases. Most of my XCOM campaigns, I don't like to lose a lot, so I choose a difficulty where I can usually get through a mission without losing like multiple people. And if you do that, the game gets easier, and then I end up just playing for you know. 60 hours or something with of just perfect mission after perfect mission after perfect mission and nothing really changes uh, which is not the ideal outcome i think it could be better if it was pushing me not to do that um and i think there are like i wouldn't say that you can never have any kind of system where doing better leads to a mechanical reward but you can also get a lot of the benefits of it without um snowballing so if you just if every time you completed a mission in XCOM, you got five level up points and you could spend those on whoever you want, um, then your performance wouldn't be relevant to how much mechanical advantage you gained. Um, whereas now, with the current system, everyone, like the better you do, the more advantage you get. Like if five of your guys survive and one of them dies, 
that's better than four of your guys surviving and two of them dying, and you get more advantage proportionally. Um, that's my iPad dinging, by the way, not yours. <laughs> um, just so you know. So I think snowballing is usually bad. I certainly see why it's it's used a lot. Um, I'm currently trying to design a very XCOM-like game that doesn't have snowballing to any major extent, and a daily question is is can we allow a little bit here? Can we allow a little bit there? <laughs> so the way I'm trying to do it is that uh, your guys will just level up for doing a mission. Uh, first of all, I have no permadeath in my game. Like uh, Everyone is a story character, everyone will survive if you complete the mission at all, and they can go down and they can be injured and maybe we'll have some, I don't know, dialogue about that, but it's not going to be, oh, I lost that character, now they're gone forever. Uh, partly just because it's a narrative-driven game, and if I want to write Writing for every eventuality of different people dying is A, extremely hard, and B, I don't think it's even that valuable. Um, so I'm just not going to let anyone die, so that makes my life easier for snowballing because you can't lose your best guy. Um, and I'm also doing it so that the idea is like if three wizards just do a mission together, they all get to level up at the end probably. I don't know exactly what the balance will be, whether it's every mission or every couple of missions, but um, it won't be based on how well you did in the mission. Uh, but I still want you to... to I still want to push you to do better in the mission. I still want you to care about everything and always, even if you know you can definitely complete this mission, I still want you to have things to think about. And like, how can I do it in the best way though? Like I want there to be a, a you know, I guess I don't want there to be a single best way, but I do want there to be important considerations between option A and option B at every stage, even if you're finding the game easy, even if you're finding the game hard. Um, and so I'm going to do it with uh, well, one of the tools that I'm pretty sure I'm going to stick with is uh, style points. So if you like, if you just whittle someone down by doing like they have three health and you do one damage to them every turn for three turns and they just wither and die, <laughs> that's one of the least exciting ways to to take out an enemy. Um, and you won't get any star points for that. That will just be yeah, you, know, you take out the enemy, great, they're out of the picture. That's going to help you succeed. Um, but if you could figure out a way to knock them through a window that takes them out immediately, and right now you, the number of star points you get for that is just the amount of health they had. So if you knock a an eight health uh, guy through a window, then you get eight star points, which is great. Um, so what the situation I want is like, even if you have a way to take out the health guy with more conventional means, it's if you want style, it's worth your while to like keep them alive and have to deal with their shit for like five turns while you try and position them closer to the window so you can do this final shot and get them through there. Um, and similarly, uh, I'm going to give you style points for overkill. So if you do 10 damage to a two health enemy, you get eight style points for that because it was overkill. It was it was stylish. It was <laughs> not practical. You didn't need to do the 10 damage. If you have a 10 damage attack and a two damage attack and you've got one 10 damage enemy and one two damage enemy, the, the efficient thing to do to survive the mission is to do the 10 damage to the 10 damage enemy and the two to the two. But if you did it the other way around, you'd get eight style points for that because that was ballsy. That's like, whoa, okay. <laughs> uh, so my plan is, it's partly also pushing you to do weirder things and just uh, have, um, uh, have a more fun time like, like let's just do magic um but there'll be a tension between practicality and style and uh if you're finding the game easy you're probably racking up a bunch of style points because you can you you if you're mastering the situation there's ways to um uh to rack those up but the key thing is the style points don't get you any new abilities or upgrades they don't level up your characters the thing i'm planning to use them for is just unlocking different appearances for the so cosmetics basically um what format take you know might change but um the idea is it never gives you a mechanical advantage i am already hitting situations where i think it'd be kind of nice if there's one character who like like to be stylish and so they got extra mana every time they're stylish but it's like okay that's the snowballing road and i'm not saying we can't take one step down it but I am saying we should be very careful about the steps we take down that road because I don't want a situation where, uh, you know, this percentage of players just get screwed from not getting the advantages that they uh, need and then can't progress. And this bunch of players get the advantages when they're already finding the game easy and then the game just continues to be easy. 